Um, this this actually closes out the news segment chat. Here we have the third. And actually, is this the fourth one? This isn't linked to his his um Twitter account. I feel bad. I need to give credit to the artist here. Let's see. Make sure I let me pull up the actual account. Mr. Nubbly. He goes by Jolly Biscuit on every single thing except Twitter, where he's Mr. Nubbly for some reason. There we are. End of the fucking world, part four. So now he's like really churning these out. Before I read this, keep in mind it's like this was July 30th, August 13th, August 27th, at least like two weeks in between them. This is another two weeks. And then this is a f only one week. So now that he's getting like likes on all of his posts, because I keep reading them on my streams, he's like, whoa, this is it. I'm taking off. I got to start upping my production because I got to give the people what they want. What they want is more of this comic series. And I agree. I do want to see more of this. So this is End of the World Part 4 by Mr. Nubbly. Okay, so the kids are going to Lesque, which is actually kind of funny. It reminds me of... um. <laughs> When I was a little kid, there was this show on, on Nickelodeon called Invader Zim. And if you were not born in the 2000s, this show is probably the most annoying fucking thing you would ever be exposed to. But back in the 2000s, um, just like he he so random a comedy was like really the height of comedy for kids. To the point where Chris Chris called this random access humor, which is just like pulling a reference or like a random phrase out of the out of like the corner of your mind. And I've always really liked that expression, random access humor, because it sums up shit like Family Guy and Invader Zim perfectly. Um, but there was a one thing in Invader Zim that I remember to this day that was so funny was that their school had a sign that said school on it, but it was spelled wrong. It's spelled S K E W L. And I thought that that was absolutely hysterical that the school itself would not know how to spell the word school. That was, that was what I found funny as a kid. That's why every, that's why all our, us little millennial kids found absolutely jaw droppingly, gobsmackingly hilarious, rolling on the ground, laughing it up. <laughs> Anyways, let's skew 79 days until the, I can't fucking believe it's only two months away. What a nightmare. <laughs> what an absolute nightmare. Uh, what kind of filth are you putting in the school library? So the Chuds have marched out of their um, dog fucking convention now, I guess, and are holding up signs that actually say, with big red circles, facts. So they are protesting the mere existence of facts, not just facts in the school library or la school, the biblio la bibliothèque de la school. They are um, protesting the, the actual abstract concept of a fact. And the MAGA Trump tard says, and his hat says, honk, beep, beep. So I'm, I'm assuming that Mr. Nubbly does not like people who drive cars um, because uh, they're very obnoxious and they honk and beep at you. But he's... He's yelling out his window, what kind of filth are you putting in the school library? And he's holding up what appears to be a magazine. Then... The window he's yelling at responds in the third panel and says, Sir, that's a Chinese takeout menu, and this is a Hardee's, which is, of course, a meme. And he says, Well, I'm taking this straight to the press. He's actually, I didn't mention this. I don't know how I didn't mention this, but he looks like um, like an old redneck hillbilly. He kind of looks like the jockey from Left 4 Dead 2 wearing a Hong Kong BP pep. And his, his vein, he's like pure red, and his veins are like dark purple, like. Like on a penis or something. And then uh, his red truck actually says, I heart kids. Kind of like the I love New York shirt, but it says I love kids. So this guy, his heart's in the right place. He says, soon the whole world will know about your brainwashing campaign. We go down. Jesse Waters, who is portrayed as a normal person, but with a distended uh, neck, says, or is talking, talking to the guy who's... I kind of admire the fact that he's on live television talking to Wesse Jotters. Sorry, I said Jesse Waters, but I was wrong. It's Wesse Jotters. He's actually talking to the Wesse Jotters from his SUV. So he's still in his car. He's being filmed while inside his car. He has not left his car to conduct this interview. 
Uh, Wessie says, wow, and just for speaking up, they asked you to leave the school grounds? He says, it's preposterous, Wessie. Do I look like a threat to children? And Wessie does not want to say no or yes, so he just says, I and well. Uh, the man is now so irate that his eyes have begun to spin around inside their sockets, and now they kind of sit above one another, like if they were um, a cyclops, but with two eyes, like stacked on top. Uh, he says, listen, if you don't want your kids speaking Chinese and being brainwashed into their strange oriental ways. <laughs> Can't be racist to the Chinese, Mr. Nubbly. Then lock your child in my basement for safety. And Wesley says, would you mind reading some of these words so the parents at home know what to look out for? He says, listen to this shit, Wesley. Dim sum? Disgusting. Chow mein? Ew. Dumplings? What the fuck? A dumpling is just dim sum, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the joke is there, of course, that it's an English word. What the fuck does that, does that say? Does this shirt say free candy? There's like little, there's little, oh, it says free speech. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking that he was going on with like a danger to children thing, but it says free speech. So that's the joke is that like he's a free speech warrior. Not that he has free candy. Okay. I got you. Maybe instead of my uh, Kiwi gladiator thing, I should just sell the Mr. Nubbly free speech wife beater. <laughs> <laughs> Wessie, what's happening to you? Uh, Wessie appears to be transforming. He says, those words, those cursed Chinese words, they're turning me into a lesbian. The free speech guy then says, oh no, I must have accidentally activated the Chinese magic. As if that was not obvious enough from the first panel. Um, it says, wub wub, and it does appear that Wessie Jotters is turning into a, a lesbian with boobs and pink hair. Uh, Wessie says, viewers at home, it's too late for me to turn off your TV, save yourself from the gay curse. And then there are old people watching this on television, and Grandpa turns into a lesbian as well that has a Madonna shirt. And says, how come the curse didn't make you gay? And then Grandma, who is like 80, says, it's time I told you where all our rubber bands keep disappearing to. I don't know what the fuck that means. What is Grandma doing with the rubber bands? Is that like absurdist Mr. Nubly, like ninth cloud, nimbus level... Um, esoteric humor or is there some lesbian fascination with rubber bands that I am completely unaware of even as a max level homophobe penis removal I don't know if that's the joke rubber band pussy China wins again leba bands flicking the bean ow that sounds like it would hurt a lot she eats them. <laughs> what kind of bearded guy makes these? Mr. Nubbly. <laughs> My hero. <laughs> Coomer humor. Okay, I, I gotta look this up. I gotta see if there's some kind of th through line to this. Can I do Bing Copilot? Does this work? I'm not signed in. I don't know if it will let me. Does the DuckDuckGo one let you... Let Leo Brave... They're all basically the same fucking thing right now, right? So we just go to Leo Brave AI. Can I ask it? Isn't there like a DuckDuckGo AI? Oh, there is like a chat. Okay, let me start with the DuckDuckGo one. GPT-4 Mini. Okay. I want to say, what would a lesbian do with a bunch of rubber bands? Question mark. Okay, this is what DuckDuckGo suggests to me. A lesbian, like everyone else, could use rubber bands for various creative or practical purposes, such as craft jewelry, organization, games and activities, hair accessories, and home repairs. Um, DuckDuckGo AI, you have completely failed me. <laughs> That's not how you answer this question, sir. Wait, can I... Oh, hold up. Let me try asking um, Grok. Maybe Grok will understand this. Grok is an expert on lesbians because he's also homophobic. Okay, Grok. What would a... Oh, wait, I gotta do Mini 2 for... Grok 2 Mini Beta Fun Mode. What would a lesbian do with rubber bands that a straight woman would not do? Question mark. Okay. 
Okay, Grok is stumped on this. Given the information provided, there isn't a direct, explicit connection or widely recognized activity related to lesbian activities or leather bands. Innovative uses in sexuality. Lesbian sex tips in movies like Good Kisser might suggest uses of rubber bands in sexual context. Oh, maybe these. You know, those rubber bands you wear on your wrist when you have, like, a, um... When you have, like, you know, you, you know how, like, the kids wear rubber bands to show, like, I support these various things. And then they have, like, a, like a sleeve of, like, rubber bands showing that they're pro-choice and pro-LGBTQ AIP plus ally, pro-support the troops, and they get, like, this entire sleeve of, like, rubber... You don't know what I'm talking about? No, hold up. I'll show you. Pro LGBTQIAP plus ally band. Wrist band. That's what they're called, I think. Aha. These. Hold up. Like these things. Can we ask the author? I'm banned on Zitter. Can someone ask him for me? Like, Mr. Numbly, can you explain the rubber band joke? This is like, this is going to be one of those jokes that is never explained. Like, um, I remember the big, the famous one from the Sonichu comics was Sonichu responding to something and saying, you don't have to tell me once, but in the Stone Age... And nobody, I don't think anyone has ever had a good guess for what the fuck that means. Or the Nick Ricada, um, a cop in Denny's joke. Like, these esoteric 9000 IQ abstract comedy bits. They have some connection to reality, but there is <laughs> there is some, some explanation for it that nobody can possibly guess except for Mr. Nubbly himself. And he might take it to the grave. He might realize that I'm suffering, I'm agonizing over the, the, quest, the answer to this and just never, never explain it. Obama suck. What's a cow tools? Okay, I'm gonna look this up. It's better not be cow tools. What the fuck does that mean? Cow tools is a oh, it's a. <laughs> Cow Tools is from the far side, published in 2082. It depicts a cow standing behind a table of bizarre misshapen uh, implements with the caption Cow Tools. The cartoon confused many readers who wrote or phoned in seeking an explanation of the joke. In response to the controversy, Larson issued a press relief clarifying that the thrust of the cartoon was simply that if the cows were to make tools, they would lack something in sophistication. It had been described as arguably the most loathed far side strip ever while also becoming an internet meme. <laughs> I mean, I kind of get it. <laughs> I, I like, what makes it funny is that it pissed so many people off. So many people read this comic and was like, fuck this guy, this piece of shit Gary Larson, fuck him, fuck his cow tools, fuck you. I don't think Mr. Nubbly could achieve that level of anger and frustration. <laughs> Maybe, maybe in fact, it was Mr. Nubbly's comics that were the cow tools, chat. Thanks for watching this clip. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.